We're going to be checking out a new USB condenser microphone. This one is from a company called Seven Rhymes, and it is the SR-AU01-K2, a name that just flows off the tip of the tongue. This microphone was sent to me by Seven Rhymes, but they don't get any input in this video as usual, and every thought and opinion is going to be unique to my beautiful brain. Whatever. It is a relatively inexpensive USB condenser microphone. So it only works over USB. It does not have an XLR input. So it's very much plug and play. It should work in Mac OS and Windows, obviously, but also should be compatible with various tablets and phones. So you've been hearing it, obviously, on my voice. I'm recording this directly into Logic Pro. And I'm not going to do any post-processing, no EQ or compression, unless I note on the screen, but I most likely won't do anything like that. The only thing I'll do is just kind of normalize the level so that they're loud enough. There's not a lot of specs that I can find on this microphone in the included manual, but just a couple things to note is the frequency response is listed at 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 80 hertz is kind of high as far as the lowest frequency that a microphone is sensitive to, but a lot of times you're going to EQ out 80 hertz and below anyway in order to minimize any sort of rumbling noise or air conditioning or something that you might have in your environment. So that's basically already taken care of for you. The only other thing worth mentioning in terms of specifications is the pickup pattern, and this is a cardioid microphone. This is the package, the box that you get. It's a pretty decent box as far as boxes are concerned. In the box, you obviously get this microphone, and it comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable. It's about six feet long. And if you don't have USB-C input on whatever it is you're connecting it to, it also comes with this little adapter, which is USB-C to type A. It comes with a pop filter. <laughs> I can't remember what this was called. Pop filter, and also comes with a foam windscreen. I neglected to mention the stand. So there are two versions of the mic that you can buy. One that comes with this desktop stand and another one that comes with a boom arm. The mic stand is pretty nice as far as it goes. It's got a weighted metal base, but it's not super heavy. And it also does telescope, which is cool. So it goes up to that height, but also down to that height. So it's nice that it has that adjustability. The shock mount is okay. It's all plastic and it can be adjusted in terms of the angle. So you can go like this and down like that, but it also has a little bit of play in it. So when you tighten it down, it's, it's possible to just push it uh, into position, which I guess isn't the worst thing in the world, but I wish it would just secure down completely tight so you can't accidentally change the angle of the microphone, which I've done. A couple of times on the front of this microphone i'm going to switch to a shotgun mic that's boomed overhead real quick uh, you've got a microphone input so you can monitor your your recording with zero latency by plugging in a, a pair of headphones which is always a good thing and then there is a gain knob on here and then there's also a on the bottom of the microphone is just that usb-c uh, input to plug in the microphone and connect it to a computer or other device. I like the way this microphone looks, but it has a nice matte finish to it and it's kind of a grayish color. So overall, I mean, it's kind of a nice looking microphone in as far as that goes, you know, for a kind of a budget-ish USB condenser microphone. The inclusion of a gain knob and the headphone input is a really nice addition and something that separates it from like a really bare bones and budget USB condenser microphone and the mute switch for that matter. The included windscreen is fine. It's pretty thick, but I also find that the microphone itself isn't terribly susceptible to plosives. It's definitely not the worst that I've ever heard. Unless you really like the way it sounds with the windscreen, then you know you don't need this, especially for, for plosive protection. Not only that, you get this, which also helps knock down plosives if you're just really bad at that. So let me go ahead and put this on here. As I'm monkeying around with this microphone and making all sorts of noise, you can also be paying attention to how much it is picking all that stuff up versus rejecting it. All right, so there we go. Pop filter is in place. So here's what it sounds like with the pop filter. And let me go ahead and do a plosive test on this thing. So I'm going to kind of talk right into the front of it and here we go. Peter Parker prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Pizza, popcorn, pizza, popcorn. 
pod mic. And without the windscreen, or the pop filter, I should say, Peter Parker prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Podcasts. Pizza. Popcorn. All right, so let's go ahead and put the uh, foam windscreen on there and see how that works. Peter Parker prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Parker prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Pizza. Popcorn. Pizza. Popcorn. Let me bang on stuff and see how it does in terms of rejecting environmental sound. So I'm just gonna bang on the desk a little bit and bang on the base of the stand and bang on the stem of the stand and tap on the shock mount. And now I'm going to tap on the microphone body. Now I'm gonna rotate the microphone around and you can listen for how much it rejects noises from different axes of the microphone. You also listen to how it changes the frequency response as the sounds come in at different angles. So here we are at the front of the microphone and rotating around to the side. This is what it sounds like talking into the side. And now I'm talking directly into the rear of the microphone and rotating around to the opposite side. This is what it sounds like. And now coming back around to the front of the microphone. So my room right now is pretty quiet. The only thing that I can really hear aside from my voice is the fan in this light. So I'm going to be quiet for about 10 seconds and we'll see how much of the ambient noise is being picked up by this microphone. Let me go ahead and see what kind of proximity effect you get with this microphone. So I'm going to get closer to it and see how that changes the way the microphone sounds. I'm going to turn that gain down. So here it is. This is what it sounds like when you're just a few inches off the front of the microphone. This is the Seven Rhymes SR-AU01. And this is what it sounds like when you get nice and close. I will compare it just real quick to the way this one sounds. And I'll also compare it to another USB microphone that I got in recently. This is the Fine Fine K658. Raskolnikov was not used to crowds. And as we said before, he avoided society of every sort more especially of late. But now all at once he felt a desire to be with other people. Something new seemed to be taking place within him, and with it he felt a sort of thirst for company. He was so wary after a whole month of concentrated wretchedness and gloomy excitement that he longed to rest, if only for a moment, in some other world, whatever it might be. And in spite of the filthiness of the surroundings, he was glad now to stay in the tavern. Raskolnikov was not used to crowds, and as we said before, he avoided society of every sort, more especially of late. But now all at once he felt a desire to be with other people. Something new seemed to be taking place within him, and with it he felt a sort of thirst for company. He was so wary after a whole month of concentrated wretchedness and gloomy excitement that he longed to rest, if only for a moment, in some other world, whatever it might be. And in spite of the filthiness of the surroundings, he was glad now to stay in the tavern. Raskolnikov was not used to crowds. And as we said before, he avoided society of every sort, more especially of late. But now all at once he felt a desire to be with other people. Something new seemed to be taking place within him. And with it he felt a sort of thirst for company. He was so wary after a whole month of concentrated wretchedness and gloomy excitement that he longed to rest, if only for a moment, in some other world, whatever it might be, and in spite of the filthiness of the surroundings, he was glad now to stay in the tavern. Uh, let me talk about the cons of this microphone as I see them. The first thing would be the gain knob. Uh, it's kind of small and hard to grip, and the reason that's a problem is it's also really stiff, so it's hard to get a grip on there and like adjust the gain. Not a huge deal because typically you're not going to be adjusting the gain mid-recording. You're just going to get it set up and most likely leave it. But it would be nicer if at least, like, given the size of it, if it had just been easier to turn. The other con I have in terms of the build quality is the placement of the headphone jack. Considering it's right here on the front of the microphone, it's not like the most um, sleekest looking, I guess, cable management or cable routing would be better if the headphone input were on the bottom of the microphone. I would say that the included accessories are okay. And, I mean, for the price, I think they're fine, but they're not spectacular by any means. The mic stand is not the sturdiest or most stable. It's pretty easy to bump this mic and knock it over, especially if you have it uh, raised up as high as it can go. And the included shock mount also isn't the greatest quality. Like I showed you, it's, it's easy to kind of push it um, into different positions, even if you have it ratcheted down pretty tight. 
In terms of sound quality cons, I think the biggest thing would be the lack of a low end, lack of low end frequency response, not a lot of bass to it. So if that's kind of the sound that you're going to go for, you're not really going to get it out of this mic. You can try EQing it and try to boost up those frequencies and see how it works for you. Also, like getting close to it, the proximity effect doesn't really do a whole lot. Last thing is off-axis performance isn't great. So not only does it still pick up a decent amount of levels when you move to the sides of the microphone, but they also, the, the change in the quality or the tone of the microphone is pretty significant. As for the pros, speaking of record quality, the fact that this records at 24 bit and up to 192 kilohertz is really good. You don't really need like that high of a sample rate for spoken word. You know, it's gonna increase file sizes recording at that, but you know, you can go into your operating system and lower that to something like 48 kilohertz and still get a really good recording. Even though there's not a lot of low end, I think that the other qualities of this microphone in terms of its response are really good. It sounds nice, it's clear, it's crisp, it's detailed. It seems pretty neutral to me in my ears. So especially in comparison to the two other mics that I compared it to, I think this one sounds, I think it sounds the most natural. And I think it also sounds better, in my opinion, than those microphones. You might disagree, but I just think in terms of like a nice neutral starting point and also something that's really clear and easy to listen to, I think this is the best of the three. The other great things about it is that, especially for a condenser microphone, it's not super susceptible to plosives. If you just speak into it with some decent technique, you really won't have any issue with plosives. I mean, I don't think that in the normal recording of this video that I picked up any plosives of, to any great degree. I really had to focus on speaking into the front of the microphone and directing plosive pattern noises into it. <laughs> and then if you pair it with the included windscreen and or pop filter, then you're pretty much impervious to plosives. The other thing that surprised me about this microphone that was really positive is that it's actually pretty decent at rejecting handling noise. I mean, you will hear it, but it's not anything that's very obtrusive and it doesn't have any like real resonant frequencies. So I was pretty pleasantly surprised with that. The last thing as far as pros is just the physical features that, that come with this microphone. You've got the mute switch, you've got the gain knob, and you also have headphones for zero latency monitoring. All those are really great to find on a USB microphone, especially one at this price point. Also, the USB-C connection is much appreciated in this day and age. In conclusion, I think that for the price that you do get a lot of value with this microphone, and I think the sound quality is good, and I think the pros outweigh the cons. So if you're looking for a plug-and-play microphone, USB, you know, just something to get up and running with, truly really not a bad one to take a look at. Let me know what you think in the comments. I always appreciate any comments, suggestions, questions that you have. And thank you for watching the video. And maybe my dogs will bark. The Bark Street boys are back.